Hello and good morning to our listeners from around the world. I want to welcome you to another edition of This Morning with Solivity, broadcasting live from our studio right here in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., and on KMET 1490 AM radio in Southern California. My name is Brian Wesley Johnson, and I am so glad you're here with us. I'm joined today by my very special friends, D'Angelo Thompson and Sheila Applegate. Good morning to both of you. Good, good morning. morning. Hey, there's the choral good morning we like to hear here. Um, listen, before we begin, we want to remind you that this is an interactive conversation. We want you to comment, ask questions, give us your thoughts during every single broadcast. Also, please let us know where in the world you are listening from. If you're in Europe or Asia or here in North America, let us know where you're at so we can give a shout out to you. So listen, guys, I'm going to start out with something special. And it goes a little something like this. In one hand, I hold tragedy. In the other, comedy. Masked for the soul. Laugh with me. You would laugh. Weep with me. <laughs> you would weep. Tears are my laughter. Laughter is my pain. Cry at my grinning mouth. If you will laugh at my sorrow's reign. These words are from The Jester, a poem by the late great Langston Hughes, who talks about the complexity of humor in our everyday life. That is absolutely necessary to laugh, even in the midst of tragedy. So we're going to have a have a talk about humor, laughter, and its importance today with my beautiful host here. Um, so I guess my first question to everyone is, when was the last time you had a great laugh? And I'll go to you, Sheila, first. Hmm. <laughs> last night. And that's only because it's early in the morning or I probably would have <laughs> had one. <laughs> I laugh a lot. Zach and I laugh till you know, tears and belly hurt pretty much every day. <laughs> so, <laughs> and we're laughing right now. I know. It's important. Oh, <laughs> D'Angelo, what about you? I would say last night as well. I was with a friend, Frank, and we were laughing. It was our friend Valentine's Day. <laughs> and we were laughing just at our own quirks and also at our parents, yeah. you know, just things that humans do, you know. So I would say last night. Wow. What about well, you? Oh man. Um at the Super at a Super Bowl party on Sunday where it was <laughs> like, I mean, I laugh. You know I love to laugh, guys. You know that. <laughs> um, but you know, those memorable laughs where where your stomach's hurting. So, you know, from laughing, um, where you, you're laughing almost like you're you, to the point at which you're crying. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, me and my buddy, uh, 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 Anzi were talking about something and, and I, and I can't even remember what we were laughing about. That's how good it was. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but I love, I, you know, um, I love this topic because I think humor in laughter is something that we don't talk enough about. Um, the science behind humor um, and how it affects us is still relatively new. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's in the last few decades that um, psychologists and uh, beha behavioral scientists have even started really looking at it. So I'm glad we're talking about this today. Yeah. Yes. Very important. Uh, yeah. Sheila, you had a question around this that we were talking about earlier. Well, I'm just thinking about, well, first of all, I love the fact that we're discussing about its mental health um, for us. And I've, I'm just thinking about how it can maybe shift our paradigm or like, what do you laugh at? Like, what do you find right. funny? Right. And for me, I do like satire. I like looking at the world in its absurdity and just like, you know <laughs> sometimes right. zach and i will like you know we'll just just kind of fall into a little 
spiel about how like we're omnipotent beings looking down at humanity and we'll just discuss it <laughs> or things like that you know <laughs> what it, what is this thing that we've got going on in our world <laughs> wow wow Sheila, I would yeah go ahead D'Angelo. Agree. um i think in now you know presently it is good to look at life sometimes and go wow and just laugh at it because if you don't you will have a scowl on your face you know mm -hmm. <laughs> Most of the time. Mm -hmm. and I see things, I'm like, is this really happening? Am I like in a twilight zone right now? But then I go and I'm like, you know what? It is what it is and hopefully it'll pass or we'll have to do something to activate a more more positive change. But overall, you have to, like an omnipotent being, right? You do have to right. observe and step back and, and just say, whoa. <laughs> you know it, it's as we're talking about this i can't help but also think about the fact that it's black history month and that laughter and humor was a very important part of the struggle of uh black people and other minorities right like we're talking about langston hughes langston hughes is writing has several different poems about um uh the importance of laughter and the importance of seeing the world in a way that makes it um, easier to cope with, right? Because that's, I guess, that's another part of this. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. 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 I just watched um, the series Kunk on Earth. Yeah. <laughs> and it is hysterical. It's a oh mockumentary. Have you watched it? Mm hmm. It's yeah, you know I'm a it, BBC lover. <laughs> yeah, so first of all, we're not talking the U.S., which is nice, right? Because we get a different <laughs> perspective, right? But they're just making fun of um, the not even making fun. They just go through like all of life from the beginning to now in this hysterically funny way that it's subtle, and you get to look at all the craziness of the earth and laugh. I think it helps us put things in perspective. Very true. Yeah. What, like yeah. Go ahead, D. Mm -hmm. Go, Ryan. No, no, no. I was gonna. I was just gonna. Th I was just thinking about this mock you docu uh, series. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, it, rem it it reminds me of the same kind of humor uh, that a uh, Mighty Python brings to bear mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. everything, right? Or uh, here in the United States, like Mel Brooks does a lot of humor around like um, the absurdity of things like Nazi Germany, you know, um, right. and, and other and other things where he brings humor to it. Like this is how crazy this stuff is. It really is like you could take this stuff and put it into um, a Broadway show and it would just fit. Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> One of the things that um, it's. Diana Morgan, who's in the Kunk on Earth, and she was also in Ricky Gervais's Afterlife. I don't know if you guys watched that, but that's kind of mocking the grieving process. And yet mm -hmm. you cry and you grow and you love in it, you know. Right, right. Um, but she says one of the lines that I just loved, it's, she says, it's the Middle Ages when religious messages of peace, unity and tolerance inspired humankind to fight till death for hundreds of years. <laughs> and it's, it's like, let's sum that all up in one moment. You know? <laughs> That's funny. Wow. Um, the, who, who are some of your favorite comedians? I've never That's asked That's funny. That. that was at the top of my, like, what I was going to say to you guys was that when I look <laughs> at comedians, they often say they have to laugh to keep from crying. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to make people laugh to keep from crying. So some of my favorites would be, oh, God, I have many. Um, Chris Rock, I love. I think his his, his comedic presence is funny and yeah. smart. Yeah. Um, I've yeah. seen Joy Behar, believe it or not, from The View live and uh, many years ago, and she's brilliant. Wow. You know? So it's just, and of course, the late, great Robin Williams, um, oh, yeah. who was pure genius. Yeah. So... It's just really like Sheila was saying, and you were saying, just looking at life and learning how to laugh about it because many things <laughs> you have to laugh to keep from crying, you know? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sheila, what about you? Who, who are some of your favorite 
comedian. I really like Ricky Gervais, which everyone thinks is funny because he's like all about being an atheist and I'm all about <laughs> spirituality. But what I love is that we're so close in the way we perceive things. And so mm -hmm. it you can come at it from different ways. Um, Trevor Noah got me through. Yes. You know, I don't think I, I just went from listening to the news to listening to him in 2016 for a while. <laughs> <laughs> like I can, can only take this through humor. Right? <laughs> and exactly. then Tig Notaro is another one of my favorite. Tig, wow. Tig Notaro is very, it's the same thing where you have to catch the humor because they don't emphasize it too much, you know? <laughs> wow. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do old school and new school. Okay. Um, old, old school, of course, the Richard Pryors, the Red Fox. I mean, there's something about in my house that we love that raunchy humor. <laughs> 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 my dad would pull out, uh, you know, uh, you know, one of those albums, especially people like, oh, gosh, um, she was in Harlem Nights. Come on now. Della Reese. El Della Reese was hilarious, mm -hmm. <laughs> gut busting. Like like your stomach is is hurt, is going to hurt for a week. Uh, he pull out one of those you know back in the day before CDs and tapes you know albums. We played those things. People, I'm talking to the young people. We actually had those things in our house. <laughs> um, but I love Trevor Noah. I love his com his his comedy is so fresh, so new, yeah. so important. Um. Um, John Oliver. Let's not John, forget. Oh, John mm -hmm. Oliver. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, um, uh, and George Carlin yes. is another one. Is another one. Uh, Got to put Whoopi in there too. Yeah. Um, John uh, and Joan River. Oh yeah. I mean, such. Yeah. I guess. I guess you know these are all people who, um, I think a lot of times we think of them as just funny, right? But you've got to be wicked smart to be funny. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I think that's the part that I think people don't don't understand that that intersectionality of reality and our perceptions and how we can make that humorous for us to deal with it. Right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to take a quick break. Uh -huh. But when we come back, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about you know, um, you know, about humor and whether or not it does have the power to like change our perception of things. And so everyone, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we'll be talking more about the power and the importance of humor. So we'll be back in about mm, two minutes. Talk to you soon. Hey there, this is Brian with Solivity.com. I want to share some exciting news about our new Aspire Academy by Solivity. Now, you probably want to know what the Aspire Academy by Solivity is. Well, it exclusively connects you with people around the globe and who share the intense desire to improve themselves and create a better life for themselves today. There's classes, there's workshops, there's live events, and even more exclusively just for you. You see, I wanted you to have a safe space where you could grow, you can learn, and it would empower you in all aspects of your life, including your mind, your body, and your soul. So how do you get started? Well, it is so easy. First of all, the best part, joining Aspire Academy is absolutely free. Just click on the Join Now button, sign up, and begin your journey. As a special part of this invitation to you, there are some free courses that are available for you to try from our amazing roster of coaches and collaborators. It's our way of saying thank you for all of your support and being with us along our journey of expansion. I hope you enjoy the Aspire Academy by Solivity today. Start the process. Learn more about your passion, your purpose, and how to live a higher quality life.
Yes, you can learn more about the Aspire Academy by going to our website and clicking on Aspire Academy there or going to this web address at solivity.com forward slash aspire.solivity. Yeah, we're back with more of this morning with Solivity. I'm joined by my friends, uh, Sheila and D'Angelo, and we are talking about the power and importance of humor. And one question that I had for both of you was um, this thought of humor changing our perception. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you think that humor does that for us? And I'm going to use Sheila. Yeah, but well, actually, you both feel like, yes. What, in what <laughs> way? Why, why, why do you feel that way? Well, I think it's easier for us to let a new concept in through humor. Mm. So because and especially humor where the person maybe sharing it is including themselves in it, right? So like we're on the in this together. Um, or pointing out a perspective that we might not have looked at, but if if it was coming at us in a lecture, maybe we would get defensive. But when there's this element of laughter in it and we can, it kind of just allows us to let it in easier, I think. Hmm. What about you, D'Angelo? I would agree with Sheila that humor is definitely an integral part of our lives. I think of George Car Carlin, a dear friend of mine, Paul, mentioned some things that George had had in his comedy specials and mm -hmm. how prophetic they were. Yes. You know? mm -hmm. And Yes, humor can be, of course, funny, but it can be enlightening. It can be educational. Um, it can be jarring, mm -hmm. you know? But in that jarring uncomfortableness, uh, you can learn. So yes, humor is uh, can be life-changing. You know, I was thinking about, as you guys brought up George, I, I can't help but think about um, people like George Carlin uh, in more recent history, George Carlin and Whoopi Goldberg, uh, even Ryan, uh, Robin Williams, where they talk about some really, really, really uh, provocative things, mm -hmm. right? Um, uh, in, uh, what was it, Comic Relief, um, mm -hmm. Whoopi was talking about, um, she did this story of, I don't know if you guys remember, it was a little girl, she was playing a little girl who was talking about her long blonde hair, and she had yeah. a shirt on top of her head, yes. right? And people were laughing and that kind of thing. And then the story changed into her getting pregnant <laughs> uh -huh. and and having and and self-inflicting herself with an with a coat hanger abortion. Right. Mm. Um, um or George Carlin talking about that in, in, in but in a different sense of you know how you know how can you be pro-life before the baby's born right mm -hmm. Mm. and then after the baby's born you're not pro-life anymore because you don't want to give them any support you know, you know and makes a joke make is humorous about it but it's also kind of shows uh what he believed to be uh the hypocrisy of that right mm -hmm. right um and i i couldn't help but when i when i was hearing these things it affected me emotionally Mm -hmm. You know, does does for you guys does that does that happen with both of you sometimes with humor, where it it gets down to your heart? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I would yeah. say yes too. It's um, it's a social commentary, right? And yeah, D. Yeah, comedians can look at something and analyze it in a way that most of us can't, but also put the humor in it. But also, you walk away from the show thinking, "Whoa, what was that?" Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I think it drops your defenses too. Yeah. And so right. even when the punch comes in, if it's something hard, you're you're open and it it, it penetrates. Mm. You know? mm. Sheila, what was the last do, can you remember a a comedic um uh monologue? Because they're all monologues, right? Yeah. <laughs> um of when there was something that a comedian was talking about that it really took you and you were like, oh, wow, I really need to think about that. Or I never thought about it that way. Oh, man. I, I'm going to need to think on this one. D'Angelo, do you want to go first? <laughs> I already said mine. That's why I did my first. 
<laughs> yes, I would say I have to go back to John Oliver. I had the pleasure of working with him on three occasions. I did his comedy specials, and um, oh, nice. Of course, he showcased many comedians, but just listening and talking with him and watching him, he has such a vast knowledge of the world, first and foremost, mm, mm. but a vast knowledge of America. And he's British, but he has a vast knowledge. Like we were talking about the blues and jazz, wow. and beginnings and endings and what's happening and how it's shifting. But also he correlates often British, the UK politics with how we're doing things here and how mm. it still overlaps. Wow, you know? and the genius of it is that you're laughing, but you're going, "Hmm." So I feel like he's a true educator and a true um, uh, observer of life. You know. Mm. Mm. Wow. I don't know if Thanks, question, but yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, because that affected you, right? You were like, "Wow, okay. Well, maybe I need to be paying it a little." paying attention a little bit more right to what's yeah. going around with me and looking at it through that kind of perspective yes right what uh -huh. okay sheila all right come on you got one <laughs> you got one Sheila. i know there was one up in there well i'm going back to the um ricky gervais in afterlife so it's really more of a show but um there are scenes a scene where he is you know, he's lost his wife and he doesn't want to live. And so mm. he deals with suicide, but in a way that like, like you said, like where you're, you're laughing with him, even in the pain of it. And wow. I think that that's really profound to be able to offer to the world or to us, you know, a, a look at, okay, this really is painful. This is a tough subject, but we can get through this. We can, we can think about this. We can let this into our consciousness so we can face it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, are there times at which doing humorous, like, like doing humorous monologues can become disrespectful? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. It's also, Sheila, I'll go back to what you said about um, finding humor and grief and finding humor and uh, loss. And I think of doing a eulogy at my stepfather's funeral and God for, for, forgive me. I know my family's going to hear this. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. We're just having you a know, good conversation. I did not want to lie. I, wa I was like, he was a hell raiser. He was a rock and roller. Right. Rolling stone, if you will. Right. And I said, you know, and we all giggled because we knew. And I was trying to bring humor to a very painful situation. You know, it's my yeah. stepfather for 35 years. Um, but I wanted to bring humor and truth in the process. You know, I think that's mm. what. Absolutely. Sheila, we're going to take a quick break, but I want to hear from you, too, because I know that you've got some thoughts about this as well. Um, whether or not there are times at which humor goes too far. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to do more on the power and importance of humor in about two minutes. See you soon. Have you ever asked the question, if I was to be anything, what would I be? Regardless of money, regardless of status, beyond popularity and fame. Living your passion, feeling your life has purpose. Solivity is a space to nurture that which lives in all of us. A place where work can become play and doing what we love creates the dreams of a lifetime. And we are back with more of This Morning with Solivity. We're talking about the power and importance of humor in today's society. And Sheila, we were asking each other, you know, when does humor go too far? Right. When does it become disrespectful? And do you have an example that you would like to share? Yeah. Well, I think 
<laughs> okay, I'll talk about myself real quick first, but I am very sarcastic and I consider myself <laughs> really good at being sarcastic because sometimes people don't know that I'm joking. <laughs> and then that's issue. That's an issue, right? If you're if you're that good at it, you know, you really gotta you can hurt people. But so that's one thing. But also I think it's like who's presenting the joke, right? There's yeah. I think if yeah. if you're making fun of someone outside uh like that you're not included in the group um i think that's a really tight line to walk and um so i i prefer jokes where the person who's making them is also included in the joke instead of right. making fun of another group of yeah. people and i also yeah. find it really disrespectful when people joke about somebody's looks or health, something that yeah. um, really it's just a human experience. It's nothing we need to, it's just a cheap joke, you know? Right. <laughs> like right. Yeah. It. Yeah. What do you think about, I mean, D'Angelo, this is, you know, looks is something that you deal with every single, almost every single day in terms of your career. Mm -hmm. What do you feel about that? First and foremost, I approach every client. I think everyone's beautiful. I just have to say that out loud. Yeah, I think if you yeah. approach it that way, you're able to enhance what's there. But in saying which, Sheila, you made a very good point. Someone made a joke the other day um, about someone's gender. And mm. it wasn't funny. Right. Right. You know? right. And I just thought, how do I address this without, not, of course, offending the person who said it? but also educational. I'm like, yeah. And I said, there's all types of people in the world. Isn't it beautiful? Mm. And I left, you know, instead of being combative, combative and defensive about it, I just thought, wow, this world has a lot of growth to do. Oh, <laughs> you know? um, speaking, speaking of, of gender and sex, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if you guys caught the... There, it was on Twitter where I, got, I can't remember. It was in a state house. I think it was in a state house. It was in a committee mm. in, in a state where they were talking oh, about you. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Where 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 they were talking about transgender people, mm -hmm. and um, there was a transgender doctor that was there who was answering questions, and one of the legislature uh, legislators asked her about her genitalia yes yes mm -hmm. and i couldn't help but think in this form because i was thinking about this today that you know you've got these these clubs of humor right where mm -hmm. people kind of laugh amongst themselves about it but that empowers that kind of behavior which yeah. was completely inappropriate mm -hmm. right right you know you yeah think? Sheila, you want to pipe in? Um, I was just thinking in along the same lines, humor changes as we evolve. And so, you know, for me now, anytime I hear any gender jokes or, you know, or, you know, somebody's, you know, a guy in a dress and that's supposed to be funny, like those become offensive when you become more conscious and aware of people. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. that's very true. And also not to like stay on this subject, but it's just really about seeing other human beings, period. Yeah. And I always say to people, if mm -hmm. you can't say something in a full room full of people that you can only say in your inner circle, it's probably not appropriate. Right, okay. right, <laughs> right. It, preach, D. <laughs> no, seriously. I'm not seriously. perfect. I've had slips. I've said things. I'm like, oh. I remember actually last week something happened and I, I had to, I said to the person, I mouth, I'm sorry. And she was like, what? I was like, I'm sorry. And then I winked because I used the wrong pronoun, you know, wow. and she was not bothered. I was bothered because I was conscious of what I didn't, but I didn't make it a whole presentation in front of a lot of people. I made sure it was directly to her and mm -hmm. she winked and I said, like that. I don't know if you heard the <laughs> whisper of sorry. Mm -hmm. I did just hear it. Yeah, I did hear it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, it's like, um, she's like, what? 
I was like, oh, oh, nothing. <laughs> not moving. But I was able to self-regulate uh, and self, uh, what's the word, to edit. You know, Correct. Yeah. I think often people do not self-edit. They are emboldened mm. in the standing to say and do whatever the bloop, bleep they want, you know? <laughs> is, 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 is that the importance and the power of humor where, where like you're talking about self-editing, self right? I think you also talked about educating. Is yeah. that the inspiration behind humor where it provides a forum? Do you think that that's true? Like, like what inspires you out of humor? I think what inspires me is when people can look at themselves and laugh at the ridiculousness mm. and mm -hmm. also their own beginnings. You know, you think about Tiffany Haddish who lived in her car, was going to comedy <laughs> clubs and living in her car and then um well, who's mm, the comedian? Mm, mm. there was a comedian that gave her money he's like you're living in your car aren't you he just right. knew he goes oh no 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 he's like yes you are <laughs> he gave her a few <laughs> thousand dollars like maybe three thousand dollars he's like right. get a hotel room write 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 create 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 and she tells the story over it was uh kevin hart gave her the money oh wow he's like for 20 for like 15 years i've been trying to pay you back he's like <laughs> i don't want the money he's like i'm glad that you are here right, I right. It, and i wanted to bless you with mm. that mm. you know yeah wow that gets me emotional what about you yeah. What was the question? <laughs> like, I'm like, like in this what, what, what type of humor <laughs> inspires you? Oh, inspires you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, D'Angelo just this inspired me with that conversation. Yeah, and I think that's too. it. It's, it's things that touch the heart. Um, for me, when I feel like somebody's bringing in a, con a, a concept into the world that is true to me, that I don't feel like people around me um, see yet. Mm -hmm. So when a comedian starts to bring those things in, it makes me feel really good. Yeah, that I, I you know, I'll just say ditto to both of you. Um, I'm also thinking that we were just talking about, um, you know, humor that talks about people's looks and their gender and sex and all that kind of stuff. There's so much more for us to talk about and and be humorous about, other than that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Um, um, and not to say, not to say that, uh, humor can't be like, you know, sister girls who are talking about the, 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 the troubles that they have to go through for their hair that can be humorous, right. Mm -hmm. To do their hair, to, you know, waking up, you know, spending four hours and this kind of thing. And you still come out and it still doesn't look the way you want it to look <laughs> right. <laughs> right. That's humorous, but talking about someone else's hair, exactly. like, you know, you know, come on. There's a lot more to talk about other than that kind of stuff. Um, and things that are provocative that we don't talk enough about. I think um, comedy and humor pr plays a very, very special role mm -hmm. in that. Um, and so those are the types of things that inspire me in terms of like comedians and when they talk about different things. Listen, guys, we're going to take another quick break. <clears throat> and when we come back, we're going to take this in another direction because I think humor and love are connected in a way that I think that we don't talk enough about. So we're going to talk about that in about two minutes. Hey there, this is Brian with Solivity.com. I want to share some exciting news about our new Aspire Academy by Solivity. Now, you probably want to know what the Aspire Academy by Solivity is. Well, it exclusively connects you with people around the globe and who share the intense desire to improve themselves and create a better life for themselves today. There's classes, there's workshops, there's live events, and even more exclusively just for you. You see, I wanted you to have a safe space where you could grow, you can learn, and it would empower you in all aspects of your life, including your mind, your body, and your soul. So how do you get started? Well, it is so easy. First of all, the best part, joining Aspire Academy is absolutely free. 
Just click on the Join Now button, sign up, and begin your journey. As a special part of this invitation to you, there are some free courses that are available for you to try from our amazing roster of coaches and collaborators. It's our way of saying thank you for all of your support and being with us along our journey of expansion. I hope you enjoy the Aspire Academy by Solivity today. Start the process. Learn more about your passion, your purpose, and how to live a higher quality life. Hello and welcome back to This Morning with Solivity. This is Brian Wesley Johnson and I am also joined by my very special friends, Sheila Applegate and D'Angelo Thompson. Good morning to both of you again. Um, <clears throat> I think, and you can, add, I want to hear what you guys have to say about this. I think there's a real deep connection between when comedians are talking about hard subjects and how they love their world mm. what do you guys think about that then i'll go to you first d'angelo yeah i think it's a coping mechanism right um to be able to process life and like i said you can either find humor in it or sadness or depression and sometimes they coexist together mm -hmm. um so yeah it's just a form of coping that's that's how i see it sheila what about you yeah i think that when we love, I think that what you were asking for me was like, when we love life or we love earth, we want it to be something better, humanity to grow. Um, then when we're pointing out the absurdities of what behavior people have or what, you know, systems are doing, we're pointing it out for what it is. And then including within that joke or within that humor, uh, a spark of hope of where we could go. And I think that combination is really powerful for people. Well, you know, D'Angelo, you and I were kind of talking about all of this offline before the show. And there's a specific question that you had that I think in this moment is very pow powerful. What's that question? My question is, um, is love conditional? Yeah. Is your love conditional? Mm. 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 Ryan, Sheila, is your love condition? <laughs> <laughs> I can say strongly yes. And the reason I can say that is because to me, love is a force of energy that is always available to us and flows through us whenever we open to it. It doesn't end. So I separate love and like. Love is that source that flows through me, my feelings for you, for something. And that's not going to end. But the way you behave, that's going to influence how I want to be with you, how I want to interact, how much I want you mm. in my life. Mm. Um, so by separating those two, I can continue to love everyone unconditionally, um, opening to that love more for some, but then separate the like from that and make my choices from there. I'm just going to say ditto to Sheila and just be, <laughs> go on now. <laughs> I, you know, I did think about this a little. <laughs> I, I, I agree with everything that Sheila just said, and I will, I will just add this to, to it. I think that love is intentional, mm. um, um, and that, um, love in of itself is unconditional. I think that that is like a, a, a I think that's a misnomer. I think a lot of people think that love it can be one or the other love is love right mm -hmm. air is air love is love water is water um it is what it is and it's 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 whether or not we choose for ourselves because this doesn't have anything to do with the other person it's about how much love are we willing to flow th in and through us you know in and out because once you do that, then you experience love 
from others because that's what you're attracting now into your life and and where you are in your intention about feeling that being that your your outer environment your outer world becomes a reflection of that and so that's what my two cents are what about you d i would agree with sheila and with you as well um i do think love is very pure that from the purest sense you can love and ingratiate someone into your life i do think it's conditional in the sense that you demand respect you demand um you know, uh, consideration and all those things. And I can say for myself, there are many people that I no longer talk to, mm -hmm. but I still love them. I still have concern. Right, right. I do not right. want them in my inner world, you know, right. my mm -hmm. intimate world, but I can still say, hey, I love this person and I'm truly concerned about you and your family. Mm -hmm. And that is unconditional, yes, but the yes. condition comes with, what are you bringing into my life? Are you enriching it? Are you an asset? Or are you someone bringing chaos constantly? Right, right, you know? right. Which is another part of this, right? I mean, um, love doesn't mean, to Sheila's point, to what you were talking about, Sheila, it doesn't mean that we don't that there's not a decision making process around um, who we want in our immediate space. That's right. you know, unconditional love or love doesn't mean that you don't have boundaries. Yes. Right. 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 I think that's important. Right. Yeah. Um, I, so, so I love the fact that both of you are talking about this because there's a difference between the two. I think people get wrapped up in the unconditional, which means no matter what people say or do or how they behave, we're uh -huh. just supposed to accept it. Yeah. Accept it and say, I choose not to have you around my space. Yes. Right. Or I choose to have you around my space. I still love you, but you can be do that over there. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not here. Or, or you can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, go or ahead. In a situation, you know, a lot of people think, right. oh, I can't leave this person because I love this person, even though they're not necessarily always physical. Right. It can be mental. It can be verbal. Mm -hmm. You know, right. there's many ways you can abuse. And often people think, oh, but I love, I love, I love, I love, I can't. <laughs> well, that's more of an addiction. That's not love. You're exactly. To right. You have, you know. We're going to stay on this topic. Um, we're going to just take a quick break and we'll be right back, everyone, with more of This Morning with Solidity. Have you ever asked the question, if I was to be anything, what would I be? Regardless of money, regardless of status, beyond popularity and fame, living your passion, feeling your life has purpose. Solivity is a space to nurture that which lives in all of us. A place where work can become play and doing what we love creates the dreams of a lifetime. Are you ready to take that first step towards true unwavering inner happiness? Are you like thousands of people who have everything they need not want, but need, and still can't seem to find happiness and fulfillment in their lives? If so, the Steps to Happiness show is for you. On my show, you will learn about the principles and practices that lead to true inner happiness. Because guess what? It isn't found in our external environment, but within ourselves instead. Together with my guests, we will explore the latest physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being practices. And together, we'll advise you on the actionable steps you can take towards a happier, more fulfilled, authentic life. So I invite you to join me each week on Soul Livity TV on the Steps to Happiness show with me, Teresa Greco. And we are back with more of this morning with Solivity. And I'm, we're asking you 
is your love conditional? Good question to ask, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to stay on this for a little while longer because I think there's some aspects that we were kind of touching on in the last segment that I want to kind of continue on. And that is um, how we can be intentionally loving and have boundaries about how people behave around us, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean for both of you? I want to, I know you might've said some things before, but I want to kind of reiterate it. And Sheila, I'll go to you. You know what comes to mind? I was really conscious in raising my children with this concept of separating love and like. So something that we do, I think, as a culture is when somebody does something nice, we say, I love you or thank you, I love you. Mm -hmm. But in my family, we've always... I've always made sure with them that I say, I like you. Thank you. I like you. And I love you. If I, you know, if I want to add love, but to the behavior that I'm praising, it gets attached to like, and then mm -hmm. the love is always there. Mm -hmm. um, to me, that's really helpful. And so now, you know, my kids will send me messages. I love you. And I like you, you know, <laughs> and I think that may, it, it helps us remember that we're free to make choices, even in that love. Mm, mm, mm. D, D, what about you? Well, wow, Sheila, that's beautiful. Um, love and Mike. It's interesting. Like, it's the same thing with saying friend, right? And acquaintance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I correct myself and they're like, oh, yeah, my friend, my friend, my friend. I'm like, oh, no, 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 my acquaintance. Because there is a difference. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know? And right. you can love someone, but not like them, you know? Right. <laughs> yeah. and you can love someone and like them. Right. You know? So, yeah, there's an interesting dichotomy there. Um, I would agree with Sheila. That's a good, that's a good way to raise children. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it kind of reminds me of what my parents would teach uh, parents around uh, and in couples around when they were, when we're, when they're together that, you know, you have to separate love from behavior mm -hmm. and that everybody is going to have different ways that they do things um that they approach life because everybody came up through a different life experience they have different maybe um similar values but uh, unsimilar values and so they would talk about like you know to what you just said Sheila I love you but I don't like you right now I don't I you right. know and I'm asking you when you exhibited this behavior th that you know that didn't feel great and that that triggered this in me right mm -hmm. um for people that you can talk that way to other people who are acquaintances or something like that i think you can just say well you know um i'll see you next time bye <laughs> 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 um but i love this question because i think that this is part of our self-assessment system Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, or, you know, taking some time during a meditation or being mindful, who is in my space? Mm. Do I need to change who is in my space? Do I need to have conversations with people who are in my space? Oh. Mm. That's hard work. It's hard. Well, but, you know, it's what both of you do, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hard. You have you to know. have those conversations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's give our audience some tips on that. So, Sheila, how do you have those kind of conversations with people? Um, well, I think what you were talking about is keeping it to the behavior. If you're talking about a certain thing that is needs to be addressed or you're not liking in a relationship, you can focus on the behavior of something um, versus the person as a whole and keeping it to the moment and owning, you know, in, in training as a therapist, you learn the I statements. I feel this way when you do this mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. and I think that owning that is always helpful. Mm. What about you, Dee? I'm, <laughs> let's talk about D'Angelo, the person, and then D'Angelo, who's becoming a therapist eventually in a few years, right? <laughs> okay. All right. So it's <laughs> you know, this is the way you make me feel, or this is how I feel. I'm in full agreement. The person in my personal life, I do have a three strikes type of situation. I will give okay. you 
I'll give you a soft warning. Like, hey, you know, when you did this, this is how I felt. Um, just letting you know it's not cool, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. And it will open up to a conversation. And I'm the type of person I'll say, hey, Sheila, meet me for tea. So if I ask you for tea, there's probably gonna be- uh oh. <laughs> that was my dad when he asked if we wanted to go to dinner. <laughs> so it doesn't mean like I'm going to be irate. I'm gonna talk to you, we're gonna talk. And then the second thing, I will give you another warning, you know. And then I make a joke. I've made a joke many times with friends. I'm like, I'm sending you to divorce papers. You know? <laughs> and it's a joke circling back to our original conversation, it's a joke, right? but there's some seriousness in it. Mm-hmm. And then that third right. conversation, I'm hoping we can have face-to-face because by then I'm kind of just, I'm done, you know? Right, it can right. Over years. It doesn't have to happen within a short period of time. It can happen over years. So yeah, wow. there, there is a process, wow. I think, you know? I, I love this. I love this. We need to just do a show on that. Yeah, you I know, think that's a great. Show. How do you how do you set uh, you know how do you set boundaries and do that in a in a most loving way for yourself yeah. and the other person? Guys, again, yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, this is a great show. I love this topic or topics, I should say. Um, mm-hmm. humor and and love, and because I think that it's all interconnected. Mm-hmm. Um. Um, listen, before we go, just want to talk a little bit about what's coming up later today on Solivity TV. And that's you, Sheila. <laughs> Con- another consciously awesome living. You'll be talking about something very imp- appropriate, which is compassion. <laughs> <laughs> it's the next step, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then later on in the week, uh, the another gratitude is a journey with you. Who do you have on? Who do you have on the show this week? Who do I have on the show this week? I think Angela Lynn Weird is that our guest coming? Oh, up? I think so. I think so. I think so. So gratitude is a journey at, on Fridays at noon, uh, and also with a replay at seven o'clock. Um, guys, anything else that's going on in your world that you want to tell people about? Sheila, no. maybe maybe uh, your soul connections sessions that are going yeah. on. So I always have available a special discount for Solivity listeners, and that's for a soul connection session with me. I help you connect to your own soul energy uh, to help shift your perspective and the soul energy of loved ones on earth or above or spirit guides. Perfect. And I know people can learn more about you, D'Angelo. You have tons of fantastic uh, content, articles, interviews, uh, right on Solivity. Uh, they can check more about, you know, learn more about you by just going to uh, the Solivity page website. And you've got some stuff going on too. I mean, you just finished this fantastic New York Fashion Week um, uh, show that was uh, last week, correct? Correct. That's that's under the umbrella of my production company, DT Beauty Inc. Uh, and as you know, Brian, I, I I'm multidimensional, so I, of, mm-hmm. like we all are. So, yeah, it was very successful. And just I'm about forward movement and about being proactive, never complaining, but doing. Mm-hmm. So uh, that's kind of my mm, mm, mm. All right. D- Reverend Deacon Doctor up in here today. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Love you all guys. Right. <laughs> exactly. Listen, just want to remind everybody that it is still February. We got uh, 13 more days of Black History Month. Um, you can go to blackhistorymonth.gov to learn more about these true American heroes and pioneers and inventors and lecturers and professionals. Remember, Black history is American history. So go to blackhistorymonth.gov and learn more about your fellow Americans. Wow. Okay. Parting is such sweet sorrow. <laughs> yeah. No. And I'll see you uh, tomorrow. <laughs> I know, but I'll see you tomorrow, right? Um, <laughs> listen, on behalf of all of us, I want to say thank you for joining us for another great episode of This Morning with Solivity. We hope that you come back and join us every weekday at 8 a.m. Eastern for our live broadcast or listen to us on KMIT 1490 a.m., For all of you out on the West Coast, specifically Thursdays and Fridays. So until next time, on behalf of myself, Sheila and D'Angelo, keep having real conversations that empower you. 
with passion and purpose and create a life full of high quality living today. We will see you next time. Bye. Have a great day. Bye. 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 <laughs>